Hey everyone, Ripley with Bob's Watches. Today we're talking all about Hans Wilsdorf, the founder of Rolex, and how he started the world's most famous watch company. Also, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date on our latest video content. Rolex is easily the world's most famous watch manufacturer, and the company's been around for so long, it's hard to think of a time when Rolex didn't exist. However, all stories have to start somewhere, and for Rolex, that story starts with Hans Wilsdorf. Born in Germany on March 22, 1881, Hans Wilsdorf was the second of three children, however, he was orphaned by the time he was just 12 years old. Wilsdorf then went to live with his uncles, and in 1900, he began his career in the watch industry when he moved to Switzerland to work as an English correspondent for a large pocket watch company. It was during these years, at a time when pocket watches were still the norm, that Hans Wilsdorf began to toy with the idea of creating a wristwatch that could be as reliable and accurate as a traditional pocket watch, which was something that was entirely unheard of at the time. By 1903, Wilsdorf had moved to London to work for a different watch company, and in 1905, he set up a business with Alfred Davis, named Wilsdorf & Davis, with the goal of providing customers with high-quality timepieces at affordable prices. In 1908, Wilsdorf registered the Rolex name, and just two weeks before World War I in 1914, a Rolex became the first wristwatch in history to be awarded a Class A certificate from the famous Q Observatory. This proved that it was possible for a wristwatch to be just as accurate as a pocket watch, and reaffirmed Wilsdorf's belief that wrist-worn watches were the future of personal timekeeping. Although Rolex watches are made in Switzerland, at this time the company was still headquartered in London. However, following the British government's implementation of a 33% customs tax in 1915, Rolex moved its headquarters to Switzerland where it remains to this day. Now, as a watch manufacturer, Rolex really hit its stride starting in the 1920s. Not only was this the decade where Rolex trademarked its iconic five-pointed crown logo, but in 1926, Rolex created the waterproof oyster case, which finally made the wristwatch an item that could stand up to the rigors of everyday wear and use. Part of Hans Wilsdorf's brilliance was his vision, but he was also an absolute marketing genius. To prove the water-resistant ability of his oyster case, a Rolex watch was given to Mercedes Gleese for her swim across the English Channel. Despite being in the freezing water for more than 15 hours, the watch remained perfectly operational the entire time. With Wilsdorf at the helm, Rolex continued to pioneer and innovate, and in 1931, the brand unveiled its first self-winding movement. Dubbed the Rolex Perpetual, it significantly improved upon existing automatic movement designs and laid the groundwork for nearly all subsequent self-winding watches. Rolex's already strong reputation only continued to grow during World War II. British Royal Air Force pilots famously purchased their own Rolex watches to replace their standard issue timepieces due to their superior accuracy and reliability. Additionally, for the troops that had been captured and sent to POW camps where their watches were confiscated, Wilsdorf personally oversaw an effort to replace their watches and refuse payment until after the war. In 1945, Rolex created the Datejust, the watch that forever set the standard for how a calendar display on a wristwatch should function, and the 1950s brought about what could possibly be considered one of Rolex's most important decades. Up until this point, most people only owned one watch, and there weren't really any wristwatches that were purpose-built for specific tasks like scuba diving or automotive racing. However, during the 1950s, Rolex released the Explorer for Adventurers, the Submariner for Divers, the GMT Master for Pilots, and the Anti-Magnetic Milgauss for Scientists. Rolex was instrumental in the development of the entire concept of sport and tool watches, and the brand can arguably be credited, at least in part, for the whole idea of people owning different types of watches for different uses and occasions. Hans Wilsdorf's first wife fell ill and passed away in 1944. The following year, he set up the Hans Wilsdorf Foundation, to which he handed over his 100% ownership stake in Rolex upon his death in 1960. The Hans Wilsdorf Foundation owns and controls Rolex to this day, and it donates a significant portion of its earnings to charity and other social causes in Geneva. What is most interesting is that despite being the single most famous luxury watch manufacturer in the entire world, Rolex is not required by law to disclose any of its financial or charitable giving information. Additionally, what this also means is that Rolex is not required to pay any corporate taxes as a result of being entirely owned by the nonprofit Wilsdorf Foundation. While Hans Wilsdorf passed away in 1960, his legacy lives on in the Rolex brand and the watches it produces, along with the philanthropic work of the foundation that bears his name. An extraordinary entrepreneur and creative visionary, Hans Wilsdorf continued to push the boundaries in watchmaking, business, and marketing. In creating one of the most successful brands in history, Hans Wilsdorf also created an everlasting symbol of success, the Rolex watch. Thanks for watching our video on Hans Wilsdorf and the origins of Rolex. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date in our latest video content.